Praise God. Jesus is the Lord. Okay, um, think about this. For some people, when Babylon the Great falls, it's thermonuclear attack worldwide, and it's going to catch a lot of people by surprise. Everybody's going to think, oh, they'd never attack America. We're too powerful. Or, I can't believe they would do that type thing. And it's going to be similar to September 11, 2000, uh, 2001. In that, remember how like everybody was like watching it for the first minute? You were like, is this really happening? Or is this some, you know, movie I'm watching? I remember when I went into work, they're like, dude, you need to go into the back room. It's on TV. I was like, where is everybody? And he didn't even tell me. He's like, go into the back room. And I walked into the back room and I could see a crowd of people in the room and they're watching the video monitor. And I went in there and I saw, you know, the whole September 11th, 2001. And I remember for the first couple of seconds, I was like, is this real or are we watching a movie? Is, you know, it took a second for me to even be like, but the people who are in New York, they had a completely different experience. They knew what was happening. I mean, geez, I can't even imagine. But that's going to happen and it's going to be big time. And people are going to disappear. And you never know what actually ever, ever happened to him. You think, well, he was probably at work. But if it were, if it happens at like an odd time, like say 7.30 at night, and it will be 7.30 at night somewhere in the world. Don't think that we're only talking about the United States. But anyway, yeah, people in high-level government need to have a contingency plan, excuse me, contingency plan in place in case a high level executive goes rogue and orders a complete surrender right off the bat in other words one little bomb is dropped we surrender you can come in and take over do whatever you want we need to have some sort of caveat set up with someone in high level government generals and you know who who believe in God and know that Jesus is Lord, and you know, hey, if I die right now, I know I'm going to heaven, so I better set up this contingency plan so that you talk to God has placed people. God has placed his people in the U.S. government like you wouldn't believe. The devil's only had, really, the devil's had seven years to place people in the U.S. government. But God's been doing it for a long time. And for those who aren't persuaded, there's the prayers of the saints. Now I'm calling prayer warriors to share this video. Y'all need to pray. And you say, what, 40 days of fasting, just like you know who is also doing. Make an effort, whatever it is, seek God and live. Seek God and live. Seek God and live. Don't go down to Gilgal. That could mean anything. That could mean don't go to the victory, don't seek victory, don't seek ministry, don't seek money, finances, and wealth. Seek God and live. Just saying. So anyway, people are going to disappear and it's like, let's say that strike happened at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So what time is that on the West Coast? What time is that in New York? I mean, not New York, but in like London and, you know, Cairo, Islamabad. Anyway, so then like I said, people are going to disappear. And you'll think, well, he might have been at work, but it happened at, say, 5.45. He usually gets off at 
He goes in an hour early and leaves an hour early so he can avoid traffic. And it just so happened that when that attack happened, he might have been still at work. He might have been on the freeway. He might have been almost home. He could have been at the grocery store. He could have been any of a hundred different places of stuff. He might have been at the gym. But no matter what, we never heard from him again. And there's no trace of him anywhere. And by now he would have been home. But what, 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 but do you know that for sure? And then for young women, this is really sad. This was really, really sad when the Holy Spirit, like there's going to be young women who disappear and the family is going to be like, she wasn't anywhere near a strike. I mean, they, they didn't attack any schools or churches or something like that. They didn't, they, they mostly were, they destroyed like the porn epicenter of the world. Yeah. Otherwise, if they don't agree to do that, then God's going to just crush every demon, demonic spirit until they just surrender and say, okay, God, you're going to do, God's going to have his way. Say it that way. But yeah, Babylon the Great is going to have to fall. It's that simple. So they're going to have to, they're going to say, all right, well, so that's how it's going to play out. They have to listen to prophecy too. The devil has to listen. You know what? You know how the devil wrote the Quran was by trying to figure out every detail about prophecy that he's heard by men of God as they move by the Holy Spirit and also by what John wrote and what Matthew wrote and what's, the devil has to try to interpret prophecy himself. And then he manipulates it and tries to change it just enough. I'm just saying. So the prophets, these 144,000 and also prophets of God who speak God's word, they need to rise up and start sharing what God gives them. Start, find a video camera, but you need to do it in the name of Jesus. If God gives you a dream, you need to get that out there. And just say, this is the dream. And that's how you start. If you're faithful with the little, God will make you ruler over much. You, If you embellish that dream and start trying to interpret it yourself and start talking on your own accord, then guess what? And I, I, I have to pray that I don't do that too because it's easy to get your own opinion about stuff. And then you're like, Lord, is my opinion right? And if you're really close to God, a lot of times your opinion is even his opinion. So even when you're accidentally just talking about stuff, it's actually from God. But here's what I'm saying. So young girls, it, this is really kind of sad. Well, young people in general, some are just going to disappear. Like it's going to be... Out of the chaos of, that this creates, there's going to be lawlessness. Looting. Just, you want to know how to prepare for this thing? You need to pray about it because I don't think you're going to, I think God will prepare you. As a matter of fact, be, just a year ago, I had, I wasn't, the Lord had not even spoken to me about this. I mean, I, I wasn't even worried. I, had no idea. I mean, I wasn't thinking end times, nuclear attack, you know, book of Revelation, rapture. I wasn't thinking any of that. And the Lord had me go camping for like a month and a half. Everywhere I went, I was just camping out, just me and my truck. I had my dirt bike. And uh, God was preparing me because the day is coming when I'm going to have to hit, hit the road. And I'll be out there living out of the back of my truck. And I have a few, you know, I have some gear, you know, shovels and axe and, a, you know, a survival equipment. Now, I'm not going to stockpile, you know, an AK-47 and 10,000 rounds. You know, I, I don't see myself being a fighter. I see myself as laying that stuff down saying, okay, God, I'm going to need your help. 
Just saying. So, yeah, people are going to just disappear, and that'll be kind of a mystery for the their loved ones. They'll always just be like, I really wonder what happened. And then part of you kind of knows, too, you know. If I mean, in, in the case that, let's say, there's a huge crater right where your husband used to work, and it happened at a time where you know he was at work, and maybe he had just sent you a text from work, and then ten minutes later, there's nothing there anymore but a giant hole in the ground, and you know, yeah... I know what happened to him, but you kind of still kind of like the idea that he might he might be at the hospital somewhere. And he's got amnesia, he got hit on the head, he was buried under a bunch of bricks, and they dug him out, and when he woke up, he couldn't remember. And then he, he remembered his wife and kids, but he can't remember his address, his phone number, and his cell phone was lost. You know, you come up with a scenario that tells you that he's out there and... Maybe you'll see him one more time, you know. And then you realize, no, it's going to be an eternity because the Lord, and that's when you realize, either you realize you're angry at God and how could he do this? Or you you realize, I'm so in love with God, this just means the end is near and I'm about to, you know, there can't be more than 10 years left. Say it that way. I mean, I don't want to give dates or anything, but when does the official seven-year period start what if it's real easy to figure out and it has to do with the day you know the day of the lord what if that's the beginning what if there's one particular day that's in particularly bad that happens all in one particular hour like literally and after that people are saying who can make war with the beast and we all just bow our heads to that. And many just, whatever you say, boss, go ahead, put it on. You know? What if some, even Christians, are like, no, it really is the Messiah. And suddenly their eyes get like stars in their eyes and they look like they're being in a trance. You know? I'm just saying. I remember... You know, like, you know when, when a woman lo loves you and the way she looks at you? I know because of the way I look at God, but I'm just saying. For those of you who are married, you can communicate just... Like, I remember selling cars and I could tell what the wife was saying to the husband by the way they looked at each other. He'd look at her and I'd think, oh, he just said, I don't like the price, honey. Pretend like you don't want the car. And then she'd suddenly go, oh, I don't like this car very much. I did not like that white interior. And he'll be like, but honey, the price is too high too. And then they both look at each other and she goes, by her look, she says, did I do good? And he kind of looks at her and goes, yeah. And they're doing it so subtle, they don't even know they're doing it. And I'm reading them completely. I'm like, uh-huh, okay, all right. And then I'm thinking as one of, as the top salesman in the dealership, I'm thinking, they are dying to buy this car. I gotta find a way to write, raise the price. Just saying. That's how the world works, too. And that's what I was trained to do. And that's why I had to walk away from that in the middle of making like 150 grand a year. <laughs> but I remember I was like, God, I can't do this. Oh, boy. And you know what's crazy is when you even try to help people, you can't help them. You can try and try. I can tell you stories of all the times I tried to help someone. Sometimes the only help I could give them was prayer. One time I prayed. I really, really prayed because I had sold this customer. Oh, it was terrible. It was like probably the worst thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> oh, jeez, God. I swear, Lord. Lord, forgive me for that. This guy comes in. He's got really bad credit because he has medical bills for his little daughter. And he's poor, he's broke, and he needs a good car. So I sold him a, a two-year-old car with 25,000 miles on it for more, more than you could get the brand new one sitting right, right on the other side of the lot. Brand new, same exact model, right off the showroom floor. 
And I sold it for like 2000 more than what he could buy a brand new one for. Oh, God, that was like the... And then I went home and I prayed and I prayed. I said, like, God, please help this guy. And thank God the bank rejected the loan. <laughs> oh, glory. <laughs> oh, man. Now, if I had wanted the money, this commission was sweet. It was a $1,000 commission. If I had wanted the money, I would have been praying the opposite. Lord, please send that through the bank. God, I need that commission. Yeah. That's the difference. That's the difference between the disobedient, lukewarm, and those who pray according to God's will. I remember when a girl was like after me, and I had just got saved, and I had to keep saying, God, I pray God's will be done. And I kept putting it in God's hands. I would even put my hand up, God, your will be done. Like I was literally tossing it at God, please carry this load. Because here goes this girl, like, Telling all my friends, oh, I want him, I want him, oh, we're going to get together. You know, and I, I wanted to do it, trust me. And I prayed, God, your will be done. And God put his hand on it, prevented everything. Thank God. Amen. I've already said way too much for this video.